it's behind walls right now, but we here we're back at Universal Studios Hollywood. We had a little bit of rain here, right right as I was arriving. People had to run for cover, but let's see what we got. Hollywood and Dine. This is the exit, but up over here. This is the first place I'm looking to get some food. They might have beignets in here. You can tell, in about an hour and a half. It's not that busy just yet. But look across the street, it's Hello Kitty! Social distance meet and greet. Overall crowd levels are not too bad right here, but... Oh, other than the taxi cab, there's not a whole lot to do here. But if we make a left turn... Don't worry, we're gonna get over to Hogwarts in just a bit. But first, we gotta check out the new Minion Cafe down here. On the way, let's check out Secret Life of Pets. So, bad news for anyone who was a big fan of Walking Dead that was right here. Obviously, not gonna be used for that purpose anymore. But what we do have here is a nice little kind of subway style map of the whole Pets Place area. Pets Store is right here. And this is currently open. Not every store is. Just first one you hit after walking in here. None of these things are really open. We did see these facades right before everything shut down. We did not hear this, however. The actual entrance to the Secret Life of Pets is right here, right across from Despicable Me. Literally just use that crosswalk. Even mentioned it on the street signs here, but right down there you can kind of see it out of the corner of your eye. The new Minions Cafe is coming up and it is busy. Before we get over there, uh, forgive me I'm not exactly an HHN expert, but don't they normally put a, a maze through here. There's absolutely no sign of that, obviously, but it is a nice dining area for this event. It's the exterior of the Minion Cafe. Over here you can see the menu. It's kind of basically like kids meal style menu for right now. I don't know if this is the final menu for the park open. This used to be a Gru Cafe, but this is by far the most popular spot right now. Because everybody wants to get in there, it's the brand new place. You know, you'd think a Minion Cafe would have a lot of banana flavored food items, but there's actually only one. They do have a nice little selfie spot. And look how far this line goes. All the way back here. Of course, it wouldn't be a Minion Cafe without a Minion meet and greet. Doubling back, we're at the kind of the plaza area. Lots of seating set up, of course, but that's not what I'm here for. Oh yeah, they got Fast and the Furious cars and music. Even got Don Toretto's Dodge Charger. You can see the evidence of the rain there. This hasn't been as popular a selfie spot as I thought it would be, but you know what? The sun is coming out. Maybe a little selfie takers will make it here too. We saw a couple of meet and greets already, but Donkey, sadly not here. A trip at the Universal wouldn't be complete without a trip to Hogsmeade. It's actually not as busy back here as I thought. Well, of course, there's always a line for Butterbeer. Hello! Enjoy our humble village! Oh! <laughs> Over here in, in Hogsmeade. Well, this says exit only. I'm going to show you that there is, of course, covered seating, which obviously was pretty important about an hour ago when it was, it was, it was raining a little bit. This is obviously a very, very popular spot. But speaking of popular, yes, all these people, all these people are waiting in line for the three broomsticks. Strangely, there's no butterbeer available in the three broomsticks. But got fish and chips and all sorts of fun stuff that you can imagine in there. 
this, I'm not sure if this is more or less than Minions, but this is a really long line. For those of you wondering if interactive wands were working, it appears as though they are. They have social distancing marking that that guy is standing on, and these guys are waiting in line for it. This guy's having a little bit of trouble getting the wand to work, though. There may be a lot of social distancing markers on the ground, but they're not using very many, even though this is a butterbeer cart, so the line out front is too long. Come here to the back. There's some outdoor dining tables here by the stage. I don't think there's going to be any performances there. I don't know if this would be the best place to eat, because these are all on an angle. <sighs> Over there's a little bit better, but this one is tilted, so not, not really the best place to eat. Hogwarts Castle, just as majestic as always. I don't think there's going to be any kind of light show here tonight. That would be awesome, but I haven't heard anything about that. At the moment, it's just Selfie Central. That may be an exit sign, but Filch's is open over here. I have a little switchback set up, but not using it. That is a cramped store. I don't really know if I feel comfortable going in there. Just outside Hogwarts, they got this nice little selfie spot. If you want to go ahead and put yourself on social media. Going over to Springfield. Some things are open, such as Suds McDuff's. But others are closed. So you have to look on the map. But Rusty Burger's got a bit of a line these days now. Over in the Duff Beer Garden. They have some some covering for these. Some of them have chairs, some of them don't. But Bumblebee Man is closed. So when I said the line for Krusty Burger was long, we're still going. Still going. All the way over here. All the way by Cletus Chicken Shack, which is strangely closed. The Cookie Mart across the street even has a bit of a queue these days. It's about 2 o'clock. Just an hour ago, there was hardly anybody here. The studio tour is, of course, closed, but according to Universal, there is a scenic photo op. Let's see what that means. So the escalators are blocked off. I guess this is what they're calling scenic photo op. You can kind of see the back lot and the metro sets over there. I'm going to move over just to the left. This, this is a much better view here. Ooh, you can see some of the snow at the top of the mountains there. Sunshine is peeking out over the valley there. And there's the metro sets. Don't know if there's any filming going on right now though. So over here by the Springfield bathrooms, they have this, you know, kind of large clapperboard type of thing that shows where filming is taking place. Now, interestingly enough, we can't actually take the escalator partway down to the lower lot, so we might see some of these stages. This, it's Homer doing a meet and greet. Right in front of the Quickie Mart. The lower lot, and as you can see, there is one green light on those escalators. Yep, they're running, and we're dancing down. No, we're not. Don't ever do that. This obviously isn't super popular at the time, because there's no food down here. It's just a place to go take some selfies and photos. But there's also a view of Nintendo World. There are the green walls of Nintendo Land. I'm not exactly an expert on these uh, construction updates. There's plenty of plenty of people much better than I am, but you can see down there that's where the entrance is going to be, and then over to the right there that's the Mario Kart attraction. You can see in that, them build that for a long, long time back in 2019. Let's take a look over on the other side. You can kind of see the edge of. Jurassic World down there that does not look ready to open anytime soon. A couple of cones up there in front of the the entrance. I don't know if they'll ever open the lower lot for any of these kinds of events, but 
we would love to get there to get a closer view of Nintendo World. Well, that does it for the tour of the grounds. Now, let's move on to some food. I stand corrected. Donkey is me, I guess. Stop will be here at Cocina Mexicana. Yeah, the line's getting long now. Still not as bad as Krusty Burger. Here's the menu for all up on digital because they don't put it on the, they don't put it on the lanyard. It's just a picture. <laughs> so what they're doing here is they, uh, they take your car, take your you know, pass here, and you know, quote unquote, quote unquote, pay <laughs> right here. And then you wait in line around the bend there and go pick up your food at the other window. These lines are really, really long now. This is kind of reminding me of the uh, taste of Calico. All right, got the street tacos. These are normally, according to this, $10. But, of course, I used, I used the lanyard, which I paid less than 50 bucks for five tastings. So, I got a bit of a deal on these. Let's see how good they taste. I'm only part way through this, but I can already tell this is amazing. I got the chicken. There's also like a steak option and something else. But these are amazingly good. Highly recommend. Yep, I finished that in no time. Yeah, they gave me forks and napkins along with, with the food. I don't know why, but that is so good. Highly recommended. Now that our meal's over, Let's go some shopping. No line for super silly stuff. Okay, so plenty of minion related stuff in here, not surprisingly, since we're in Despicable Me. Plenty of these classic shirts, of course. But there's also Secret Life of Pets merch in here. We have the pet store just across the way there, but still selling a little bit of the pets merch in here, right next to Minions. Just outside Super Silly Stuff is where the splash pad would normally be, this little play area. I don't even think this will open whenever the park opens. This will likely stay here, but that ride should open up just a little bit after a Taste of Universal ends. Line for Minion Cafe, still pretty long. Speaking of the pet store, let's take a trip inside. So if you're looking for a plushie, <laughs> they have lots of them. I'm not really familiar with Secret Life of Pets. As far as I know, these are all of the main characters. Snowball apparently has his own kind of kiosk here. He's got his own ears. That's a thing now. So kids' shirts. How much do these ears go for? So $18 for ears? That is way better than Disney. They don't just have Secret Life of Pets merch. There's also some masks and some keychains. This is the adopt a pup stand here. Uh, so you can get free bandana accessory. This is what the bandanas look like. The adopt a pup goes for $25. I'm not entirely sure how this whole thing works, but they they were marketing this a little bit earlier. I'm gonna have to ask. Across from the pet store is the city snack shop, which is open and has no line. So this is highly recommended. They have the turkey crepe witch here, which I am absolutely getting. It's one of the few short lines I've seen all this time. Okay, these, this is the turkey crepe witch. You got turkey and bacon and tomatoes. I already dropped one, my bad. Lettuce, this probably will be amazing. The good thing is, that's normally $10, so I got a bit of a deal. But I also got beignets. Now, I don't know if beignets have ever been available at Universal Hollywood, but Universal Orlando, of course, has a Mardi Gras event 
I don't know how these beignets are gonna compare. They look a little small. Okay, this crepe witch is amazingly good. The bacon is super crisp. The lettuce is even really crisp. It's nice and fresh. Beignets aren't quite as like, they don't like slam you with flavor, but what is there is pretty good. I mean, these are small, but uh, excellent job, Universal. Yep, that's all done. That was so good. That is better than anything I had over it at Knott's this last time for Taste of Poisonberry. Highly recommended and there was no wait for it. Based on the quality of the food so far, I would say this has already been worth the money. But what's interesting is I don't think Universal has ever done an event like this. And considering all this room they got in the plaza area, they've used this for Lunar New Year, why don't they do a food and wine event next year that sets up booths around here? Obviously you wouldn't have the Toretto's vehicles, but I think this would be a good idea to do next year a little, a little differently, you know, with, with booths set up where those umbrellas are, with specialty foods and whatnot. I would, I would highly support that, Universal. Because it is cold outside, it's in the 50s, they got these kind of warming right by all the seating areas just outside Starbucks here. You can find this map online, but they have a little, little display out here next to it, illumination. So I came over to Hogwarts. Time to get some butter beer. Don't be fooled by that line. That's a line for honeydukes. Remember what I was saying about the line for three broomsticks? It, it's disappeared. I don't know what happened, but there is no line for three broomsticks. And yet, some reason, there's a huge line for honeydukes. There wasn't a bad line for butterbeer, though. Believe it or not, this is the first time I'm ever actually having butterbeer. I know that's kind of weird, but I thought this would be perfect opportunity to do it. So I'll let you know. Okay, first impressions. It's nice and creamy. It's really good. It's got some carbonation. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of butterscotch. I mean, this is, it's a cold day, so cold butterbeer isn't normally what I would want to order right now, but that was what they had available. So I, I still enjoy this. I'm definitely going to finish this and all right. Cleaned it off. Completely finished. That was really good. The, the, the taste stayed consistent the entire... And this is a good portion size too. So, the hype is real. Alright, that was an amazing butterbeer, but it's really filling. I'm probably going to come back and get fish and chips or shepherd's pie over at Three Broomsticks. But, right now, I'm going to take a little walk. See how the park is operating now. That it's after four o'clock. Due that the line for the three broomsticks had pretty much disappeared. A crusty burger. Nope, it's still going. How far is it gonna go? Well, not quite as long. But yeah. That's still a really long line. Children are not permitted Back to ride downstairs. Strollers. Also, there is no I showed you who intended land for where those escalators. people are. There's a little Please crowd over the there. The step. This crowd has gotten a little bit longer. The sides. I didn't show you forward at all times from this on the side. Escalator and remain standing. For your own safety, route. please do not the sit on the steps. Safety announcement is Thank you. fairly loud over here. But there's the tram route. Just waiting for us. They haven't sent any trams by or anything couple maintenance vehicles. That mural has been there for a while. I don't know what's going on inside, but... Down here next to the mummy, of course, where this tent is, that's usually where an HHN maze is in queue. At least that's what I'm familiar with. I don't, again, I don't really know HHN very well, but I think that's normally where they put something HHN related. I don't know what the, that tent, I mean that blue tent means, but will there be HHN this year? I don't know. 
I've never been, so I would be excited to go for the first time. Let's do some more shopping out here at Animation. Considering the song outside, this is an appropriate display. Always bright and colorful as trolls. And I've seen this before, but it's interesting that Dr. Seuss doesn't have any presence over here. There's no rides or anything at, in Hollywood. Obviously, at Islands of Adventure, they have a whole Dr. Seuss area. They do have some Dr. Seuss merch here. Well, when I say some, it's just cat and a half merch. I don't know if I've seen this shirt before, but it's got all the big stuff here for Hollywood. Of course, calling on the back lot tour. Yeah. That shirt. 25 bucks. So I did talk to a team member about this adopt a pup. Yeah, what, what it is, I think of it as something like the build a bear. And, you know, these are $25, but they come with like an adoption card. I'm assuming you can like give a name to them or whatever. Because they said, you know, we don't want to think of you as buying, <laughs> you know, purchasing a pet. You know, you adopt a pet in real life, and they want to do that here too. And of course, you get a free bandana here. And there's also a carrier that can add on for 15 bucks. So if you can't tell already, the merchandise for Secret Life of Pets skews to the really, really young onesies and whatnot. Last store, let's see what's in the Universal store. As you can tell, this is a very spacious store. Lots of room to walk around. I've noticed that there's been no wait to go into any of these stores. There's lots of room, and obviously there's capacity limits, so there's still no wait. So, lots of wait for the food, but nothing for the merch? That's a little strange. I don't know if I've seen these shirts, kind of more 4th of July type stuff. Hollywood royalty. Got some more just generic Hollywood over here. I don't know if I've seen this shirt. This is pretty sharp. I like this gray one quite a bit. And the black as well. Of course there's sweatshirts. We got sandals over here. I don't know how much these go for. Yeah, almost 38 bucks for sandals. Good luck. Got kind of a Fast and Furious set up over here. Lots of, got some shirts, wide open. You ride, you fight. Street racing shirt, I don't know what else there. Got that. It's kind of an awesome hat, not gonna lie. Tank top. Whole side here themed to the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park up there. But I love this sign. Yeah. I think we might be seeing that a few times. Of course, they got these goofy masks. <laughs> these are always fun to put on. Transformers over here. Even kind of like the retro Transformers. And of course, the largest section is the Harry Potter section. And I said I didn't really want to go into Mr. Filch's Emporium, you know, the exit gift shop for Forbidden Journey, because it's cramped. This is a pretty good alternative. I don't know if they have everything in here. I assume they got your shirts for your particular house. There's presumably mine, Quidditch equipment. If your name is your name, they've got your name on it. I've seen quite a few people walking around with these these on their back. I don't know how much these go for. Go for $36.95. So pretty expensive. These people just really want this. Over here is where you can buy some robes and some sweaters and of course every house is represented. I said earlier that we found Kitty over across from Hollywood and Dine. But this is where she usually meets, and I think they just had her over there for the rain. But nowadays, taking selfies at a normal spot. If you're like me and you, and a wand has yet to choose you, well, Ollivander's is open during Taste of Universal. Entrance right over here. 
line stretching way, way back there. Probably do it another time. But for right now, I'm just gonna walk right into the three broomsticks and grab some grub. I think I'm going shepherd's pie. Here's the shepherd's pie from three broomsticks. Bite into that in just a little bit and show you. The outdoor seating, pretty spaced out. It's not nearly as busy as it was earlier. I don't know why everybody flocked here right at the start and then stopped coming over here. But there's there's actually empty seats here. Well, so far this is very very good, nice and warm. It's good on a nice cold day, very much comfort food style. I wish there was a little bit more of the meat and a little bit less of the potatoes, but that's probably just me nitpicking. The other thing, another $10 item that I got for less than $10, didn't I? Well, no trouble finishing that. Very stayed warm the entire time. I, I, I certainly enjoyed eating this. I'll have to try the fish and chips at some point, but I'll give it a, a thumbs up. Some lights are on here in Hogsmeade, but it's not quite dark yet, and as I suspected, nothing happening up here at Hogwarts Castle, except those little lights there. Lights are on at Springfield. It's not like these are, you know, incredibly beautiful or anything. They're, you know, kitschy and fun, but it's starting to get a little bit darker. The park closes in about an hour, so I don't know how much darkness I'm gonna get. We'll see some lights on. At Universal Plaza, we see lights on over DreamWorks Theater. And of course, there's lighting rigged up around here. I mean, does it make the cars look any any more snazzy than before? But I'd take a stroll down the Pets Lane here at night. You can see in the window they have some lights up here at this bookstore right next to the preschool. Not much animation though. Lights on the sign of Secret Light of Pets and there's a few lights in the windows. I don't know enough about the movie to see if there's any Easter eggs in those windows. But you can take a look inside the attraction lobby. The express entrance to the left there. Main entrance to the right. Social distancing markers all set up. This was intended to open, you know, soft opening. There was technical rehearsals that they had signups for one day after everything shut down last year. So as far as I know, this is completely ready to go. In Cafe Neon is all lit up because minions causing mischief. Still plenty busy around here. I think that's going to do it for me here from Universal. I really enjoyed this. Uh, this they made a big deal of marketing that this was in fact sold out. And there was a, a few lines that were really, really long. But for the most part, this didn't feel overly crowded. It just felt really fun. A lot of people, a lot of vloggers here, obviously. A lot of huge Universal fans and theme park fans. Overall, I think they, Universal did a pretty good job. I wish the lower lot was open, but overall, I highly recommend this. I will see you again soon, Spinning Globe. Well, next time, we'll ride some rides, all right? The world is finally starting to open up again.